Welcome into Greensboro, North Carolina. They call it Tournament Town. It is semifinal Saturday. Four teams left trying to take home the ACC championship. Who will it be? We will narrow it down to two today. We are just about an hour away from tip-off. Florida State up first, getting ready to take on Louisville. Florida State took down Wake Forest yesterday. Syracuse took down, Syracuse was taken down rather by Louisville. So that's the first matchup, Florida State and Louisville. Later on, we've got NC State and Boston College. But right now, we welcome you inside the Greensboro Coliseum, sitting alongside Elena Beard, Monica McNutt, and Kelly Gramlich. I'm Kelsey Riggs. We have got a jam-packed day. Kelly's going to be running double duty. We're excited. She's with <laughs> us. She's also going to be on the game. And you guys, I think the way yesterday ended really set the pace for what today is going to be like. So let's show you how it all went down yesterday and get you caught up on all of the action. Number four, Florida State knocked off the Cinderella team. Number 13, Wake Forest. The Seminoles making their sixth semifinal appearance in the ACC tournament today. Number one, C. Louisville beat Syracuse behind Dana Evans. 23 points. The Cardinals are 10-0 this season when she scores 20. Then it was NC State. At the two seed, it was the Koenig and Kunane show. They combined 12 of 26 from the field, 32 points, four assists, and five of seven from the free throw line for the dub. The story of the ACC tournament was up next. Boston College, one of the best stories in women's college basketball, defeated Duke to advance to their first ACC semifinal in 10 years. And if they win today, they could very well earn themselves a spot in the NCAA tournament for the first time since 2006. Can't wait to see how it all plays out. There are now just four semifinals begin in just a little while. For the fifth straight year, at least one of the top four seeds did not make the semifinals. It is a huge Saturday in men's basketball. Luke Hancock gonna join us live from Durham in just a little while to break down that race for the ACC championship. But right now, we are coming to you live from Greensboro Coliseum still. And we talked about one of the big matchups today, but how about this second one? This Boston College team, Kelly, surprised a lot of people. They <laughs> did not <laughs> surprise you with the win last night over Duke. The Eagles continue to soar. They have improved their win total each of the last three seasons and the 11 ACC wins, their most in a season since 2004 and 2005. Right now, let's get over to Coach Mack. She was a player of the, uh, she was coach of the year rather, maybe has some players of the year in the future, and she was on Packer and Durham this week. It's extremely humbling, almost still uh, hard to believe. And I, I take it as this is an award that is basically saying that my team is the ACC team of the year. And my coaching staff is the coaching staff of the year because anything that you get like this is all about the people you surround yourself with. I'm just really humbled at this opportunity to showcase the culture that we're building at Boston College. And it's about a family and we are a tight knit group and I owe everything, uh, any kind of award like this is all about my team. They are the ones that play hard. Like I told them, I just coach them. They're the ones that play so hard. I love what she said there because it definitely seems like if you want to come in and change a program, you have to do more than just what's happening on the court. It's about the culture. It's about that family atmosphere, as she said. And Kelly, I am going to give it to you because you do <laughs> love this Boston College team and you've been talking about them for a while because of some of those things right there, not just what they've been doing on the court, but what she's done behind the scenes. They, they have changed the culture, and I think to understand the change, okay, those are so mm -hmm. important. Became that nine ACC games over the past four years, right? Four seasons, and they went 11 this year, and now they're in the semifinals of the ACC tournament. They just believe, and I know that yeah. sounds pretty simplistic, yeah. but Coach Mack has instilled a culture of belief and confidence in these players because they're obviously talented. You see what they've put together with that system. They've thrived in that, and you have to give so much credit to Coach Mack. Four sophomores got big minutes yesterday in that big-time victory over Duke. I, Coach Mack has done a tremendous job, but I think the idea that young women go to programs just because they go to programs, like, did you go to school and not want to win? 
Nope. Did you go to school? <laughs> right? Like, so, like, all you need is an opportunity yeah. and someone yeah. that yeah. believes in you to Absolutely. tell you, this is how we're going to do it. If you if you do this, I got you. And that's what's happened at Boston College. But give all the credit to those young ladies. They're like, nine, nine wins in four years? We're we not about that life no more. Here we are. Absolutely. I, I think Boston College is a perfect example of what it means to embrace the journey. Um, a lot of teams get lost in that journey because they start looking outside of what they are wanting to do as a group. Um, so they were able to sustain a high level of mental toughness without talking about it. And I think that's the most impressive thing. They were okay with flying underneath the radar, right? I'm interested to know at what point was BC on your radar? Probably when they got to that six win mark okay. because that's their record. They've never won more than six ACC yeah. games. And then I think also when they beat Florida State. That's when I started looking like, okay, Boston College, you beat Florida State. What's the deal here? Because they had some losses in the non-conference that make mm -hmm. you scratch your head, but it just shows their growth. And you talk about yeah. focusing on yourselves. Yeah. Coach Mack, in the locker room after each of their wins here, she's yelled at her team. She says, who do we play tomorrow? And they yell back, it doesn't matter. I love it. Because oh, it's yeah. all about them. I love it. Yeah. Ready to play, right? That's fantastic. Here it Coach shows. That's it fantastic. shows in their play yeah. every single night. 0.7% chance for them to win the ACC tournament coming in this, and now they are in the semifinals. Kelly, if they want to win, then a big part of this game is going to come down to whether or not they are able to stop or slow down or contain Elisa Kunain. They have to find a way. Elisa Kunain is one of the best post players in this league. She leads the ACC in double doubles, and one player that was so effective against her was North Carolina's Janelle Bailey. And the main thing is she was physical. Janelle Bailey's bumping Kunain basically at the Tar Heel logo. Then she gets the ball inside. Bailey pushes her back out, forces a turnover. Kunain had at least five turnovers in this game. She struggled to take care of the ball. They also try to get Kunain in some cutting action. They're using Koenig here with a back screen. First of all, Koenig is too small to handle Bailey. This will be Emma Guy's role today, by the way. Janelle Bailey does a great job of getting around that screen, staying with Kunain. Again, physical, pushing her outside of the paint. Kunain's feet aren't anywhere near that paint. Bailey does a great job of forcing Kunain to go to the inside of the paint. You'll see what she does. Bailey steps up, boom. Kunain cannot square up. She cannot get comfortable. Janelle Bailey just physical with her. And then one more play here. Watch Elisa Kunain get out and run. Janelle Bailey running right after her. It's a sprint to get down to the block. And Bailey really hustling to make sure Kunain doesn't get anything easy. That's the key with Kunain, to make her work for every single basket she gets. Again, Bailey pushing her completely away from the basket. 12 and a half feet all over her. Solid defense, doesn't foul. Janelle Bailey really showed us the textbook way of how to guard Elisa Kunain, and Emma Guy has to be able to do that today. I'm raising my hand, coach, put me in. I'll, I'll put you in as soon as we take this. She leads the ACC in double doubles and rebounds per game while also posting that 55% field goal percentage in three. So obviously stopping her is gonna be a key to them. Monica, you have something to say. And, and do you think they're gonna be able to do what Kelly just said? Yes. However, I think we saw Alyssa Kunain take a big step yesterday. She got into foul trouble early. She came back and she responded in kind. Francesca Pond, Georgia Tech, that defense held NC State to 57 or 47 points, excuse me, on the basketball game. Um, that's something that they should be very proud of defensively. But when Kunain came back in, she was far yeah. more settled in her position. She said she talked with Coach E, one of the assistants on the staff, and she said, you just need to go and score. Yeah. But how she scored to me was so important. Remember, she was posted up, passed out of a double team for that big time bucket that Jakia Brown Turner hit down the stretch. And so, do I think that, I think we're dealing with a different Elisa Kunain than when she point, played Bailey. And that's a good point, because that here. film is from January, yes. early January, mm -hmm. and Kunain has grown a lot since then. She's grown a lot, but you don't, every team doesn't have a Bailey, and you don't have a Shook. Not sure what Emma, Kai, Emma Guy is capable of doing against Kunain, but you're going to need two to guard, guard Kunain yeah. and force her to get the ball out of her hands. And it's going to be on the, the NC State guards to hit that outside shot. So one of the things that's really cool about us being here at the ACC tournament is not that we just get to see this and be here and interact, but also that we get to go to the press conferences. And so I want you to hear Wes Moore at the press conference yesterday. You might uh, recognize another voice as well. Coach, you guys hit a little bit of a skid uh, to finish the regular season, but what are you most proud of in terms of um, the way this team is playing right now as you head deeper into the postseason? Yeah, I, th I think we. I think you maybe said we we weren't weren't going to be a big factor. Or whatever. Is that right? We can have an honest conversation, coach. Let's get it. <laughs> but, I mean, y'all was giving me some question marks. No, I, I appreciate it. It helps us, you know. Um, you know, this league is tough, y'all. I mean, we lost to Louisville. They're they're pretty good. 
okay? Uh, we lost to Duke, okay? Um, you know, again, they were playing really well and had a lot of momentum. We lost to Georgia Tech. I mean, they beat Florida State twice. They're pretty good. They beat us once. So, uh, you know, we didn't shoot it well the first six games in February. I mean, it wasn't any secret. We had kids shooting 17%, 18% from three that normally are shooting 35%. So, yeah, we went through a tough time, but, uh, you, you know, we knew we got some great shooters. They're going to snap out of it. Coach, first of all, thanks for playing along with us and not going all in on Monica. We appreciate that. <laughs> but, Monica, that was a fun interaction, and I, and I liked his response to your question as well. I mean, the numbers. I, and nothing I, I, I'd like to believe that everything I've said this year is backed by numbers a little bit. But in particular, <laughs> when we talked about, about NC State this season, they did hit a slump, and it was obvious. So much of their offense went through Elisa Gunain, and when she struggled, mm -hmm. the team struggled. Behind the three-point arc, the, that shooting was non-existent for a stretch in that season. Now, I I agree with him. The ACC is tough, and the best teams and best coaches manage to ride the wave and figure out. They're in a fantastic position here. Mm -hmm. I got you. I'm with you, Monica. <laughs> Thanks, I agree with you. I've kind of fallen out of belief with NC State a little bit. Now, yesterday when they came back down 21-7 to that Georgia Tech, I thought they were done. But to come yeah. back, Kudane played a lot better. And, you know, this is a team that has a lot of senior leadership, but he's exactly right. They went so cold from three. Yeah. At one point, they were the best three-point shooting team in this whole league. And then in February, it was ice cold. And that's a factor today specifically against a BC team that shot the ball really well yesterday. They went cold from the three, but I think it was it was due to listening to what people were saying. They felt like they had to take mm. the three. So they fell into just taking the three, and that's not okay, right? Um, I, I, obviously, when you walked on the set yesterday, we, it was during the NC State game, you was like, what happened? <laughs> I said, Kunane, yeah. right? Kunane happened, and I've always been a believer in her because she has the ability to learn and apply at a very Quickly. high level, yeah. right? She went from the first half to the second half and came out and made a tremendous impact. But also, I have to give that to Westmore because they came out and made an adjustment, which they started operating in that gray area, which is between that that free throw line and that wing area, which made the defense make a decision from that three point shooter. And then the defensively, that he we went to some zone. Yeah. That's not something you see NC State do a ton, but they yeah. went to zone to slow Kiara Fletcher, who was having a terrific game, um, and Ivana Rasa, who was also doing her thing in this tournament. I I, I like where this team is. I, I like where this team is today. T today. Yes, we're out of February. <laughs> or yesterday. We'll Monica see if she wore, likes where they are today yeah. or this not. Wore her red as a peace offering. For the it pack. could have been a Louisville red. I don't yeah, know, that, Monica. That I'm not going to give it to you yet. All these old. teams are red. So. <laughs> With an ace up their sleeve, Ace Koenig introduces herself to us. Who am I? I'm a senior guard for the NC State Wolf Pack. Some things you may not know about me are, I speak French fluently, I have a Chinese middle name, and I'm claustrophobic. Who am I? I'm Ace Koenig. Luke. You guys, Luke coming for everybody's job. I love it. Come on, Luke, bring all the heat. Luke knows his women's basketball. I respect that big time from Luke. Let's go by the numbers with NC State. And as you see, they're 25 and four in the regular season. The biggest factor in NC State's success has been Elisa Kunain. She leads the ACC with 14 double doubles. Wolfpack also an impressive 75.5% defensive rebound rank, which ranks at the top of the ACC. Entering the tournament, given a 24% chance to win. One of their key players is Ace Kunain. I'm Aislinn Koenig. I'm a point guard at NC State University. I would describe myself on the court as somebody who's very steady. I pride myself on being consistent, being able to lead the team with that steady and forth. Come and play my game. Ace is uh, sometimes a security blanket for me when you need a shot, when you need a three, when the other team's making a run and you need somebody to turn the tide. Ace can do that. My impression of Coach Moore when I first met him was actually pretty funny. He, like, sang to me. You know, the George Strait, you got to have an ace in the hole. Uh, tried to convince her that I wrote that song just for her, but I don't know if she fell for it. She's had to play a lot of point guard. Uh, that's tough, especially when you're facing full court pressure and 
and uh, really aggressive defenses, but she's handled that well. She's been a program changer for us. I'm the number one. Program changer, he says, pretty strong and powerful words there. We've talked a lot about Elisa Kunain throughout this season, but Ace Koenig tied her yesterday with 16 points, and Monica, she has been a key factor for them as well. Absolutely, and you mentioned Elisa Kunain and the attention that she garners, but we talked about it particularly during that rough stretch for the Wolfpack. She cannot create for himself, for herself, excuse me. So she needs Ace Koenig or Kai Crutchfield, whoever the case may be. But what I was most impressed with from Ace so far since we've been here in Greensboro is just her overall poise. Yeah. Yesterday when that team got down early to Georgia Tech, she was like, look, just we're here, we're good, settle down. And she said it wasn't so much about nerves as much as it was about us being patient and going back to what we do. When they started to get up and down the floor and she was pushing in transition, she looked fantastic. That's what they're going to need from her in order to uh, make a run or win this thing. I mean, Koenig is the leader. She controls the pace of the game. I think yesterday, in the first 15 minutes of that game, NC State went through four different lineups. Koenig was the only consistent factor in that sense. Um, and, and I think it's important. I think at some point, Koenig needs to be more selfish. I think she gets so caught up into getting everyone involved, making sure that everything is okay, that she forgets about herself. See, that, that's, that's, yeah. trick. that's interesting. What you got? She's feeling a little bit of yeah. that senior year urgency. Mm. When she hit that backdoor cut to kind of get yeah. them back in the game, the emotion she showed, mm -hmm. that's rare from Ace Koenig, but I think you're going to see more of that today. But that was with her playing off the ball. Yeah. I think they maybe found a place for Kai Crutchfield to be at her most aggressive, right? She gets to touch the ball a little bit, gets to fill it, but also she gets to make plays and then in turn, and turns around and makes her more aggressive offensively. One thing I would love to mm -hmm. see, though, in addition to that, against Virginia, when they hit 13 threes, yeah. it was a lot of Kunane in a ball screen uh, with Ace Koenig. Absolutely. She rejected the screen, went the other way, yeah. and set up for some of those threes. That is your best pick and roll player. Uh -huh. You want her in those in those positions, but at the same time, when, when teams are focusing solely on that pick and roll, you want to get her off the ball and, and put her in a position to score. <laughs> Who do you have well, winning this I'm, game? I'm going with Louisville in this one. FSU's been a little bit inconsistent to me, and Louisville is just playing tremendous defense right now. Yeah, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go with NC State. Although I would love to see BC's journey continue. I'm going with. All NC State. right, we will see how things play out. We will see you back here in a little while. Make sure to tune in for nothing but net. You're watching College Basketball Live Scoreboard, presented by Under Armour. Welcome back. Let's take you back to how it all went down. First game of the semifinals, top seed at Louisville versus number four seed Florida State Seminoles. Dana Evans, coast to coast to tie the ball game at 30 as we sent it into halftime. Late third quarter, Nadra Wolf up tough in the paint, putting the Seminoles up eight points. But Louisville, they're the one seed for a reason. Yassine Diop, tough jumper as the shot clock expires. Cards led by two. And then a moment that could have changed the game. Kaya Gillespie gets fouled on the shot. She is unable to shoot the free throws, heads to the locker room. Courtney Weber, 70% from the free throw line, 58% in conference play, knocks down the free throws. Florida State up one a little later. Evans to win the game. No dice. You mentioned them, BC. 0.7% chance to win the title. Although they are one of the last four standing, they are that much closer. ACC Coach of the Year, Coach Burnaby McNamee. Coach Mack from Boston College is doing a tremendous job. Kelly, are you satisfied with your answer from Charlie? Well, I love that we had Charlie on. I thought he made some great points about Boston College. And this is why he's the bracketologist, mm -hmm. because he thinks of it all. I hadn't even thought about that yet, because Boston College beat Florida State earlier in the year. That Florida State win really helps them. This is literally the best-case scenario possible for Boston College in this ACC tournament. They can help themselves by winning today, mm -hmm. but it looks like they might not even have to win today. They just have to see what happens elsewhere. But FSU really helped BC. I, I think one of the most interesting factors that Charlie um, alluded to is the fact that it's, it's not necessarily about, yeah, it is about the wins and losses, but the fact that it, your competitiveness determines mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. if you make it into the, the final seed or not, uh, pool or not, is interesting. Um, I, super disappointing if mm -hmm. Kai Gillespie's injury mm -hmm. plays a factor into what Florida State is doing, but sometimes that is the way the cookie crumbles as we take a look at Boston College preparing for a great game. Mm -hmm. Taylor Soul had a big time performance yesterday. You see her numbers on the season, almost 15 points per game. Okay, guys, Boston College. 
They've got a game tonight. <laughs> <laughs> They're playing against <laughs> NC State. Uh, Latrina Robertson, I'm putting you out there on television. She texted me and said she was taking VC. Really? Fatigue, guys. You're such a bad friend. I'm a how great do, friend. How do you put her out like that? Because I'm, I'm a great. <laughs> listen, if I get called out, Latrina can get called out. All right, the keys to this game as you see it, Kel. Well, with NC State, I think it starts with them because they're still the favorite in this game, as they should be. Elisa Kunain can't get in foul trouble like she did against Georgia Tech. I know it benefited them to a certain extent, but you have Emma Guy down low. I had the pleasure of sitting next to Yolanda Griffith down there when I was doing sideline, who's the assistant coach for Boston College, WNBA legend. Yes. So we all, oh, she was I'm really so cool. Jealous. We became friends. But I <laughs> talked to her about Emma Guy, and I said, what was the key? What has been the key for Emma Guy's transformation? And Yolanda said, look, I've just convinced her how important the post position is and how you can't take a single play off. Yes. The phrase she kept saying about Emma Guy is know your worth. Know that every single possession, whether you touch the ball or not, because mm -hmm. it can be frustrating at times for a post player when you're not getting touches, you're working hard, not getting touches. If, even if you don't touch it, every possession you need your best effort. And she said that's been the key for Emma Guy and that's gonna be a key for Emma Guy today. Good stuff. That is fantastic stuff. Now, on the flip side of that, if we stick with the post matchups, uh, NC State does not have Yolanda Griffin on their staff, obviously. However, Coach E essentially, in a briefer way, said the same thing to Alyssa Kunain yesterday when she came back in the basketball game in terms of being patient and being a bucket getter. When you look at the matchup of these two, will it be just straight up them one-on-one? -on -one or We've seen Alyssa Kunain get trapped a ton. Yeah. And that's the only way I think you can attempt to contain Kunain if you don't have a Bailey or a Shook on your team because they bring more of a physicality to the game. Um, but I think with Kunain, you got to bring two. You got to force her to give up the ball and you got to force our um, other teammates to make that shot. And at this point, um, Koenig is the only one that's really producing from the outside. So um, you want to you want to force other people to make shots. And part of why BC yeah. has started playing so fast. They're second in the ACC in pace. They average 75 possessions per 40 minutes. They want to go. Yep. And part of it is because most of the time they play four guards around Emma Guy. And so it is going to be tough for Emma Guy if she's left on an island with Elisa Kunain. I'm sure they're going to double some. But in certain situations, if she's left on an island she has to hold her own and she can't get in foul trouble that's going to be huge yeah. that's going to be a major key now we're looking at ace koenig the outstanding senior point guard for westmore's group in her last three games guys we've talked a lot about nc state struggles so let me make sure we have some balance here in her last three games in the victory she's shooting 43 percent from behind the arc when ace is on from the three-point line that is an absolute game changer because teams have to respect her ability to knock down that shot and she still is a willing creator in terms of getting in the gaps finding Kunain or penetrating and kicking to shooters like Jakia Brown-Turner. When I look at this matchup, second chance opportunities, I think, are going to be huge because you're going to have potentially your two bigs in the middle that cancel one another out. Can those guards get in and get second chance opportunities and hold more possessions to me? I'm glad you brought up Koenig's numbers recently because she's really shooting the ball well. Her numbers have not been what they were last year. To make 93s and shoot 40% is absurd, but I feel like she's getting hot at the right time. Yeah, I, I do. Um, with Koenig, obviously she's hitting the outside, hitting the three-point shot, but I think it's important that she becomes a threat all over the court. Um, whether it's driving, whether it's looking to take her shot, get to the rim, I think that's huge for, her, for NC State. College Basketball Live Scoreboard is presented by Under Armour. The only way is through. It's time for us to say farewell to Kelly. <laughs> Y'all are holding it down. She's got multiple duties out Bye here Kelly. today. Um, make sure you get that ice that you needed, plenty of hydration. Your questions have been fantastic. All right, we're well, switching gears back to the ACC, yeah. Elena. Mm -hmm. Boston College, NC State. We've talked Alyssa Kunain. We've talked yeah. Emma Guy. Anything else that stands out for you in this matchup? Um, I just think... With NC State has to establish Kunain early. Even if she's going through moments of frustration, you have to figure out a way to, to establish her because it was it was shown in the game from yesterday that they started moving her into the gray area and, and make getting her sort of looks at the basket off the roll instead of establishing her directly on the block. You know, I yeah. it's funny, the way Boston College is playing mm -hmm. on fresh legs. Mm -hmm. This is a very, very tough matchup to call because Boston College looks tremendous right now. As we take a look at Westmore mm -hmm. um, and our lovely Pac mascot getting the NC State crew ready to roll. Yeah. I just, I'm. Can, I'm, can Kunain keep up, right? Well, yeah, I, I, I right. get what you're you saying what I mean? in terms of like, you know, having fresh legs and that plays a part. But at the same time, you got to understand 58% of this offense for BC comes from sophomores. They're young. They have young legs. They can get up and down. They can run. But that is a factor, right? Um, but I, I just, 
I, I do question Kunain being able to keep up with that pace because the last three games for Boston College, they're averaging 73.7 points per game. They're, they're scoring at a high rate. Um, so it, 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 it's a question. You're 100% yeah. right, and we actually got this fantastic yeah. note from our researcher, Car Carter. Boston College has scored 80 points in three straight games versus conference opponents for the first time over the last yep. 20 years. Yep. So you're absolutely right when we mm -hmm. talk about pace of play in that one. Here's, I guess, mm, guys, this, this first game has been great. The second that, game yes. has a lot to look I'm up to. I'm expecting the same type of intensity. But, okay, so you yes. just said this about South Carolina in terms yeah. of their talented <laughs> freshmen, how they will handle the moments going into potentially a championship game in the SEC yeah. and then the NCAA tournament. Are you concerned about the same thing for Boston College and these sophomores? All right. One, a year makes a huge difference. Okay. They're sophomores. Two, they, not nothing against South Carolina. I'm not comparing, like, the two teams. But Boston College plays hard on every single possession, and I, I and I, I don't you don't see that often. Every single player gives it their all on every single possession, right? Um, so I, I, I don't know. I it was very hard for me to pick one or the other, um, but I did go with NC State because of that experience. But it's going to be a good game. The three-point shot for me is going to be the biggest factor yeah. it well, not biggest but yeah. one of the big factors in this basketball game it, it will be and let me go back to the point of the 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 experience that i i think bc may have even though that they're young is it's the confidence that coach mcnaby instills in them she puts her players in the best position every single time to play at their best to play at their skill level and uh, you don't see that often most coaches want their players to come in and play their system she's made her system constructed her system around her players coach mac has done a tremendous yeah. job coach Moore has done a tremendous job. Kiara Leslie on to the WNBA last season. Folks wondered what NC State would do. Well, they are here. They earned a two seed in the ACC tournament. They're battling a six seed in the second semifinal. It is going to be a fantastic game. Let's get you to the floor. Beth Moens, Debbie Antonelli, and our girl Kelly Gramlich. Folks, enjoy the game. We'll see you back here at halftime. College Basketball Live Scoreboard is presented by under Armour. The only way is through. Welcome to the ACC Women's Basketball Tournament. It's semi-final Saturday in Greensboro. And it's all a part of Champ Week presented by Principal. Big upset in our opener, Florida State knocked out top seeded and regular season champion Louisville. They are into the final, awaiting either the two seed NC State, searching for their first championship since 1991, or the Eagles of Boston College, fresh off the upset of Duke yesterday. They have never played in the ACC final. They have a chance to get there with a win today. The uh, Florida State seniors all had double digits. They came up huge in the upset of Louisville. They've beaten the Cardinals twice this year. And now it's game on for NC State and Boston College. And we welcome you courtside here at Greensboro Coliseum. Beth Mullins along with Debbie Antonelli. And Debbie, the last couple of uh, weeks, even the last month, Boston College has been a, a great story around college basketball, hot at just the right time. Well, they sure are. And they have the ability to score in so many different ways. They defend. They are a really interesting story and, and team to keep your eye on because their numbers are trending, right? Look at their RPI. They're, it's going to go down after this game. And their strength of schedule is 69. They've got their win against Florida State all of a sudden has more weight on it because of Florida State's upset over Louisville. And then Taylor Sowell led them to another big win against Duke yesterday in the quarterfinals uh, with, with still a bigger fish to fry today if they can take out NC State. No easy task with Elisa Kunain leading the charge for the Wolfpack. The only player in the league with a double-double, and she's important because they have to play to her and through her on the inside. She's got multiple skill set to the three-point line. They can play her with her back to the basket. She demands a double team. She's very good in open space as well in their pick and roll game. She can score with her left hand. She can get to the free throw line. She's got terrific footwork, and she has great hands around the rim. Home whites for State, dark jerseys for BC.
Eagles have won nine of their last 11. NC State struggled down the stretch. They lost three of six and then right at the ship yesterday. This is the third game in three days for BC. They also had to win a first round matchup with Clemson on Thursday. The player to keep your eye on is number 13. She is Taylor Soul, and Emma Guy inside does a nice job of sealing. Those two players on the inside will be difficult for NC State to defend. They're both committed to working without the ball. Ty Crutchfield mid-range is good. I think this could be a shootout based on the way BC played yesterday. Their rhythm was outstanding on the offensive end. Taylor Soul had a huge game. Number 13. So did Gerard, their point guard. I like this BC team, Beth. I think they got balance. I think they, they have the best distribution of field goal attempts of any team starting five that I've seen in Division I basketball this year in the Power Five Good leagues. Balance. Good they, balance. They tied Louisville as the, the highest scoring teams in the ACC. Here's a look at the starting five for State. East Koenig is one of the top three-point shooters in the Wolfpack history, number one in white. Here she is with the ball. And a good counter to Kunane inside as Elisa gets to the rack, couldn't finish. She's getting much better playing the game on balance, playing the game low to high as Kunane. Certainly capable of putting it on the deck. Gerard with the pass to the corner, and down it goes for Seoul. Yeah, Taylor Soul is a player to keep your eye on. 5'11", plays bigger than her frame. She's got great bounce. She can grab the rim with two hands, but she wouldn't tell me what her vertical was. <laughs> High enough, I'd say, is the yes. vertical on that. Koenig with a little space, and she hits it. Yeah, NC State can get hot early with their ability to shoot the three, and certainly the second-best three-point shooter in the history of NC State basketball is Ace Koenig. Back-to-back -back seasons of 93s. She's got 73 now this year. Good entry to Guy, who had the name deep. we will go back inside to her. And goes to the left for another bucket. It's going to be interesting to see how long Westmore will stay, allowing Kunane to play one-on-one -on -one with Emma Guy, because Emma Guy's stronger. She plays the game on balance, and she'll try to draw some fouls on Kunane. Because NC State's a different team when Elisa Kunane is not on the floor. 6'3", senior out of Penfield, New York, near Rochester, is Emma Guy, and she gets the steal. Playing in her 107th career game today. She's the best shooter by field goal percentage in the ACC. And she's given us a taste why, because her first two attempts have been from about a foot away. Dickens on the drive and the dish. You have to jump to the ball. And if you don't jump to the ball, BC is going to slice across the front of your face. That would be a cut, slice cut. Kadeen with the catch. Down the short corner. She'll try and go to work on Guy and muscle that one up and in. And Emma Guy runs. And she gets down the floor ahead of Kunane, who was still on the ground at the other end. She might be the strongest low post presence in the ACC. She can catch, she can score through contact, and she beat Kunane down the floor. And that's why she got that two point basket. Koenig, short on that attempt. She thought it was touched instead of the BC ball. And there is the ACC Coach of the Year, Joanna Burnaby McNamee. Fourth place finish this year, even though they're the sixth seed. That's the best ever for BC. 11 league wins is a school record in the conference for BC. She told me the last six weeks her team has practiced an hour and 15 to an hour and a half max because they get it. They've had total buy-in all season, and they'd rather have rest than reps because of their IQ. This is a team that was picked in the preseason to finish 13th. And now here they are, one away from the final. As Jakia Brown-Turner, an all-ACC freshman performer, hits for State. Quick on the counter, Marnell Gerard. Gerard and Dickens pull the trigger quickly in transition. If you don't get up on them, they can drive by you as well. BC is six for eight to start the game. Contact, good more whistle out top. 
Down turn and the drive this time to the left side and a foul. Taylor Soul, the first. Final turn up to the line for Westmore, his seventh season at NC State. 30 years, though, as a head coach with over 700 wins. Just missed out on their first ACC regular season title since 1990, and now trying for their first ACC tournament title since 1991. Of course, those were all under the leadership of the late great Kay Yao. Wes has had three consecutive 25-win seasons, and he, along with Jeff Walls and Mel Fortner, are finalists for the Naismith Coach of the Year Award. There's only 10 on that list. This guy will check back in for Seoul. Good start. One point game, four and a half in. Winner gets Florida State in the final. An upset winner, the four seed beating the one seed Louisville early. And they will get a chance to play for their first ACC crown. The catch and the quick release. The Elisa Kunane jumps out to hedge on that ball screen, and Emma Guy quickly gets to the block and gets position. She does an excellent job of moving and shaping up to the ball, does Guy. She is four for four to start the game. Jones. No good. Kunane offensive rebound and circles around to the other side. Elisa Kunane's got to stay on her feet. That's a great finish, though. Good offensive rebound. He's starting out two for three, so the bigs have shown early. Kanae from the corner, no. Good save by Kanae. Koenig. Second chance won't go. Third opportunity and a foul. State hitting the glass early, but it's BC with the one-point lead. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Principal Financial Group, Investments, Retirement, Insurance. And by Snickers, the world's a better place when satisfied. Welcome back to Greensboro. Boston College leads NC State 15 to 14. Emma Guy off to a great start. I sat with Yolanda Griffith, WNBA legend and BC assistant coach during the Louisville game. And she talked about how she's worked with Emma Guy on knowing her worth as a post player. Sometimes you don't get the ball every play because you're a post player inside, but you have to work hard every possession and know your worth and what you bring to the team, guys. Tell you what, she brings a lot of value for sure. And Yolanda Griffith would know she's a Hall of Famer in the Women's Basketball Hall of Fame, one of the all-time greats. But uh, that's a great teacher to have someone that's been through it, that understands. And Emma Guy has great footwork. She sits in the post. She's got terrific hands, and she can score with her left or her right. You know, Beth, every time I see NC State play, Kayla Jones becomes more and more impressive to me. She's perfect for Westmore's four-out, one-in, yep. because she can handle, she can shoot the three, she can break pressure, she rebounds, and she can defend her position well. She has to have a power forward that can do all those things and stretch the defense. Taylor Ortlip with the nice drive. They are shooting 73% to open up this game with Boston College. Kanane knocked out of bounds by Guy. That pass has got to have more zip on it. It gave Emma Guy plenty of time to hollow out, get around off the contact, and get that deflection. Zip it. Little zing on it? Usually you tell me to zip it. <laughs> the pass 
Johnson is uh, more and more lost out situationally knowing what to do with it and kind of misses the bunny. So after Ace knocked down the early shot, she's missed her last three. So NC State is at their best when they're playing inside out, when they're moving the ball and they're playing through the interior and then throwing skip passes over the top or making Kunane demand a double or score one-on-one. -on -one. Gerard, they're trying to find Guy. Down low. Look at her duck in the timing on that. That is terrific. Five for five inside. Good patience by Boston College to wait for it. Emma now with 10 points. She knows exactly when to duck in on the post. I think Elisa Kinney's got to play up on her high side. because she can use that 6'5 frame. She's got a little size and length over it. Kayla Jones rebounds the miss. Behind the back, the pitch. Koenig missed down another one. Ace it was, just has not been her usual self the second half of the season. She's got to self-correct. Now watch Emma Guy right here. As the ball comes to the top, she's going to step over the top of Elisa Kunane. Now look at Kunane right here. you got to beat her to the spot. You can't let her bring the swim move, step in front of you, and then bury you in the rim. That's a big, strong post player, Emma Guy, who's got 10 points in the first quarter. And it's not like you're surprised they're going to her. Nope. You knew they were going inside. She hit all five of her shot attempts. She's going to take a breather right here. Good balance to tackle. So you still got Gerard, a soul to turn to here. You know, off the bench has yep. been a really good player for them. She's played well in the last couple of games. Taken away by Boyd. That's the first turnover for Boston College. That was an issue for them the first two games of the tournament. Another offensive rebound. Fighting for a third chance. That's what's keeping NC State in the game right now is their work on the glass. Seven offensive boards, but an inability to cash them in so far. So NC State has missed 10 shots and they've offensive rebounded seven of them. That's outstanding, 70%. Even I could do that back. <laughs> I'm telling you, Georgia Pinot has been terrific in this event. It has really been outstanding, scoring over her points and rebounding numbers in the last two games. Well, the average is seven. 1,000th career point yesterday. 14 against Clemson in their opening here. They are now shooting 77% in the first quarter is BC. And they are on a 7-0 run. Gerard. Bucket. Knocking down another one. Wow. This backcourt. This sophomore class. Four sophomores on the floor with a senior right now for BC, and they have been balling since they got to Greensboro. Six seed trying to reach the final. Jones, an answer. It's the three. I'm telling you, she's not at the top of the scouting report, but she is valuable to the pack. A carry called on Boston College, so NC State with a chance at the last shot here. Field. Finds the screen, gets the shot away, and time it hits it. Pulls NC State within one. You like offense? Then you better come around back for the second quarter. This is outstanding. We're on pace for 100 points in this game. <laughs> We welcome you back to ESPN's Chat Week, presented by Principal. Terrific first half as Boston College shoots better than 
And yet NC State able to hang tough, powered by four triples. The winner of this one moves on to the ACC final to face Florida State. The four seed is in after the upset of top seeded Louisville. And terrific shooting for BC. They've been about offense all year long. And they showed it in that first quarter. And Boyd comes out to grab the lead for NC State. Let's check in with Kelly Brown. And guys, Coach Mack was really emphasizing the defensive principle in her huddle. She wants to make sure that her defense goes from help side and closes out on shooters on the wing when NC State's in that ball green, ball screen action attack in the middle. Really focusing on going help side to closing out on those NC State shooters. Well, a guy whistled for the travel, and then she immediately goes to talk to the official. She and uh, Kunane have not been bashful about mixing it up inside. Well, most teams in the second half of the season have been very physical with Elisa Kunane. Here she's a little pick and pop. Puts it on the floor. I think that's when she's got to use the board on that shot. They're on an 8-0 run right now, NC State. Good rebound by Jada Boyd now. When she comes in the game, she's another freshman on the All-ACC freshman team. She brings instant energy to Westmore's rebounding and defense. Boyd and Brown Turner, the two rookies that are out there together. Shot clock's down to five. Brown Turner wants to launch. Misfires on the deep ball. This is going to be punch for punch. I mean, this game is going to be one possession after another. Both teams execute so well on the offensive end. I'm not sure either team can stop the other. A lob over the top to Guy off her fingertips. Coming up tonight, 6 Eastern on ESPN. It's the showdown, North Carolina and Duke. Blue Devils won in Chapel Hill earlier this year. A thriller in overtime. The rematch is tonight from Cameron Indoor. Should be another fantastic showdown. Even though it's been a down year for Carolina, they uh, still managed to figure out ways to tussle with one another right down to the wire. Grace Hunter with a bucket off the bench and a four-point lead, and they continue to have the hot hand here. Grace Hunter continues to come off the bench and, and be an offensive spark. They scored 12 unanswered. NC State's depth has gotten better, and they lose Georgia Pinot on the back row. Everybody ball watching. No one sees her cut behind the defense. Ends the drought for BC. Remember ball, a couple. Ball, you man. Yeah, I remember that. Should be a triangle, right? Oh, it's a flat triangle, flat triangle. Oh, NC State. Jada Boyd, they're comfortable right now. She's got five. Off the steal, clutch field. Oh, that pass was better. That's a layup. Kunane, uncontested, three-headed. She is a terrific three-point shooter for the Wolfpack. Elisa Kunane shoots better than 40% from outside the arc. Good rejection of the screen by Schwartz. Lisa Kinane, like a guard, gets her feet outside the three-point line, gets her feet under her shoulders, and look at that beautiful release. At 6'5", she continues to evolve her offensive skill set away from the bucket. She is a huge weapon for the Wolfpack and was in the player of the year contention with Dana Evans until Louisville came into Raleigh and knocked off NC State. That was really the deciding factor in the regular season chase. It really was that week because Louisville lost two games going into that one, minus Elizabeth Balagoon. And then NC State lost two in a row after that because Georgia Tech went in there and beat them. And I'm surprised Charlie doesn't have Georgia Tech in the conversation. I, I would keep him in the conversation. I think so. I think so. They could get seven into the tournament if you've got BC and Georgia Tech in there. 
Guys, we talked with Charlie Cream during halftime, and he said what really hurt Georgia Tech was that they had to play Pittsburgh instead of playing Notre Dame because Pittsburgh's RPI is so low. That seems very unfortunate for Georgia Tech. Obviously, they could have won a few more games in the regular season, but they just got a bad draw in the ACC tournament, it appears. Well, Notre Dame's RPI wasn't that great anyway, so it wasn't yeah. like it was going to be that significant of a difference. I mean, Georgia Tech has two wins over Florida State and a win over NC State on the road when they were top 10. I think that's significant. NC State has hit eight of its last 10 shots on a 20 to two run. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Caesar Canine Cuisine. Caesar, love them back. Elisa Kunain, the focal point, the epicenter, the player in the middle for NC State. She's got to perform. She's got a variety of ways to beat you offensively in the paint, outside the three-point line. Her post-up ability, her ability to move her feet in the middle pick and roll. She's a dangerous weapon for the Wolfpack, and they've got a 10-point lead behind her play. Big burst here in the second quarter. They've hit six of their last eight shots, a 20-3 run that actually carries over into the end of the first, so it's eight of their last 10, and here they come again. Well, since Emma Guy started the game, what, five for five, they have not been able to get her a touch on the block. NC State's ball pressure has picked up on the perimeter and made it more difficult to get that entry pass. Kunane with a touch too close. She's hit five of seven and has 11 points. And they've opened up a 12-point advantage. Dickens doing some extra work to get open. Guy trying to post up. Kunane holding her ground inside. So tough shot. Kunane with her fourth rebound. Good repost inside by Jada Boyd. Good pass. Koenig off the ball fake. A 24 to 3 run. That's why the Wolfpack, when they play inside out, Beth, you make the defense collapse. You got weapons inside they can score. You got to help out a little bit because they can't manage the Kunane matchup one on one. And then Boyd goes to the block, does a great job throwing a skip pass to Koenig. They've hit seven shots in a row. That's when you know your team's unselfish when they post, repost, they trust, they still pass it. And now we're out letting the ball to Kunane. Terrific box out there. Okay, Boston College has got to dig in right here. Desperate for a stop. Flair. Maybe a reaching foul. It's a good thing Kunane went to meet that pass. Otherwise, that was a two-point pick six going the other way. Watch Jada Boyd inside. She's going to post here and then look at Koenig relocate on the perimeter. Okay, the ball goes in, then she throws it back out. It's a repost. She draws help. It's a skip pass. Koenig gets off the bounce on a closeout. That's perfect execution for NC State. And that's the second foul on Gerard. She picks up number two. She'll stay in the game right now. Kunane, and the guy made that one tougher. <laughs> guy forced to come way out on top to touch it. Slipped the screen, but couldn't get to the rim with it. Gerard, guy missed for the first time today. And maybe a little gas, Kunane's beating her up the floor, and so is Jada Boyd. For three games in three days, takes its toll on most. 26 to three run. And a big NC State lead.
23 to 27. NC State rolling right now, 310 to go in the half. Well, Lisa Kinane, a 6'5", a first team all ACC, the only player to average a double-double, inspired by an incredible family unit and core. Her dad, Dan, since she was two years old, had an accident on a bicycle. He's been in a wheelchair. He's a paraplegic, and he has been uh, what you would call the terrific girl dad. He spent a lot of his time helping Elise grow up, do homework, driving her to practice. He always, has always said that Elise has gotten great teachers and great coaches along the way, and he's been proud of his daughter's success. But the day that I gave her a nickname called Big Smile, which is sticky, is the day I met her dad after the fact, and I did not realize why she had such a big smile. Her spirit is bright. She's an enthusiastic, energetic kid who loves her family and loves to play the game. And her dad has just helped fuel that passion for his daughter. And Debbie, the Kunanes actually hosted NC State for dinner Wednesday night when they got here to Greensboro. And her parents joked that they're glad she went to an ACC school so they could host dinner. Because if she was playing in the SEC, she'd be down in Greenville or somewhere else. So they were very excited about that. She's going to take a seat right now for the final three minutes of the half. She just picked up her second foul, but a 26-3 run. Everybody getting involved for NC State. Guy hits the free throw. She's got 11. This was after BC shot better than 70% in the first quarter. And since then, it's been all state here in the second. And NC State can go a little deeper into their bench here with three minutes to play in the second quarter. Nice slash to the basket, Boyd fouled. See, when you move the ball, you force the defense to rotate it. You get that gap, and Boyd takes advantage of that basket cut to the rim. Well, Steph Curry will be back for our NBA Saturday primetime game that has the Warriors hosting Tobias Harris. Sal uh, Horford and the 76ers are covered six with the jump at 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific on ABC. And you can always watch both on the ESPN app from anywhere. Got a huge day. The women's college hoops coming your way tomorrow, our championship Sunday with four championship games, ACC, SEC, Big Ten, and Pac-12. And we'll have the UConn semifinal from the American Athletic Conference Tournament with their championship game on Monday night. So get your popcorn, put your feet up, get your remote control, put it on one channel and stick. We get to tip it, too, so we'll be breaking down the whole day, all the games. Tipping at noon, yes. I love it. We'll be watching the app on the way home. One more dribble to improve that angle into the post. Later today, SEC semifinals, South Carolina, Arkansas, Mississippi State, Kentucky. Big Ten semis, Maryland, Indiana, Michigan, and Ohio State. Northwestern and I were both lost yesterday. How about Kim Barnes and Rico yes. getting team to the semis from Michigan? And then the Pac-12 semis late night tonight, Oregon, Arizona, and UCLA Stanford. Entering for BC, number 13, Taylor Silva. Coming up at uh, the half here in Greensboro, the Audi Halftime Report. We'll have a recap of this outburst by NC State in the second quarter. And Florida State head coach Sue Semra joins the show. Her seniors led the way today. And they upset Louisville to get into the finals. For the second time, they will be going for their first ACC tournament crown tomorrow. Hopefully, for our sake, they will be healthy. Now, they had a couple of key players hurt late in the game today. Nasha Wolfolk was able to come back onto the court. Kyle Gillespie was not. You see that explosion step by Taylor Sol, number 13. And she can go off the bounce, cover a lot of distance with one dribble. After just four points in the first half, she had 26 yesterday in the deep room. Guy with the catch. Missed it inside. 
Give a guys a double ice bath when you get done with this game. She posts up hard inside. And Kayla Jones misses the trail three, but that's a good shot for her to take. That's right, double ice bath after you're done playing against her. Boston College has not had a basket since the 7.49 mark of this quarter. When the drought was allowed NC State to bust it open. Dickens threw it right to Kayla Jones. And that's a fatigue mistake. And then Koenig gives it right back. Dickens fouled on the drive. It took a lot of energy for BC to come back in that game last night. Four minutes to play, they were down seven, and they outscored the Blue Devils 14-0 to win that game in advance to the semis. Dickens hit a bunch of big threes in the game last night, Beth. They had four players in double figures. Dickens was four for five outside the arc. But today, she's 0 for two. So sometimes fatigue, your legs, shots are short. Don't get back on defense. You'll probably see Joanna Burnaby McNamee substitute a little bit more frequently just to keep everybody fresh. 24 points in the first quarter, six here in the second for Boston College on just one of nine shooting. One basket in 10 minutes. Have a chance here to get another. Schwartz will pull up. Short. And Russ Moore saying one shot, everybody. Slow to go, Pink. Jones hits the three. Bucking. Dickens did not even bother to get it up to half court for a heave. 48 30. NC State, a dominant second quarter, led by Elisa uh, Kunane. And they hold Boston College to their lowest scoring quarter of the season. Let's get you over to Kelly. Coach, 48 points in that first half. What was the key to your offensive execution? Well, we're running. We're getting out and going a little bit, and you know, we got to be in attack mode. Uh, Boston College playing their third game in three days, and uh, you know we really are stressed and trying to get transition going, see how fast we can get the ball across half court, and uh, everybody that's going in there has done a nice job for us as well. Lisa Kunane was great in that first half. What did you see from your post player? Yeah, again, we're doing a good job of getting it inside when we have opportunities. And, uh, you know, she's hard to guard down there one-on-one. -on -one. If they do help, we got some kids that can knock some threes down. So, kind of got to pick your poison. Thank you, Coach. Appreciate it. Thank you. Stayed out scoring Boston College 25-6 to six in that second quarter. And they have the lead 20 minutes away from a berth in the final. 48-30, the score after the break. It's the Audi Halftime Report. Welcome to the Audi Halftime Report here in Greensboro. It is halftime of our second semifinal, but let's take you back to the first semifinal of the day. The four seed in Florida State taking on the one seed in Louisville. Kaya Gillespie gets fouled here. She's gonna stay down. This was a tough fall for her. She would not be able to shoot the free throws. Insert, Courtney Weber, the sophomore. She goes to the line, cool, calm, and collected. Knocks them down, Florida State up one. Dana Evans here trying to tie it up on the drive. The putback does not go. Down goes the one seed, Florida State Seminoles with the victory, 62 to 60. 
the one seed goes down. That breaks a trend here in the ACC Women's Tournament. Look at these numbers. From 2013 to 2019, the one seed has been victorious. Well, 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 the Seminoles had something to say about that. Welcome into the Audi Halftime Report alongside Elena Beard and the captain of the Florida State Seminole ship, head coach Sue Simrau. Coach, what a tremendous effort. What a tremendous performance by your seniors. What were you saying to your team going into this ballgame? Well, you know, we, we had a look at Louisville earlier in the year, and we knew what kind of team they were, how big and, and how athletic they were. We knew we had to get back in transition defense. Just really proud of our seniors and the way that they came in. Really took a young group. We've got freshmen and sophomores, no juniors that are healthy. They took those kids and just put them on their back. Absolutely. Before we came on camera, you spoke about the inconsistencies of your team. What do you think has been the change in mentality for you guys? You know, and, and it really is. You look at our, our scores, and it's been two, three points. And, you know, we had a game up at Syracuse where with 0.6 seconds, there was a crazy shot that mm -hmm. went in. So, you know, there was some, maybe some doubt that creeps in with a younger group and with yeah. a group of seniors. You only have three. And so, you know, but then again, now it's tournament time. Everything's mm -hmm. fresh. Everything's new. And I think they came out with a sense of urgency. Yeah. We saw the highlight. Kaya goes down. What can you tell us about the injury? Yeah, you know, and it was her back. The way that it twisted was uh, tough. And the way she came down was tough and she couldn't return uh, you know we're hoping that with some treatment that I know that she wants to play in the game we'll just see how she is but so let's say she can't go who do you look to is it a collective uh, group or is it one person that you can look to and specific, specifically um, Courtney Weber yeah I, I tell you I mean, she's she's played great yeah. she, in the last two games she's been consistent I knew that she she's we've seen it in spurts uh -huh. but her consistency has been fantastic I think Sammy Puisis has been insert her she's been big for us as well I agree Coach, this year obviously us sitting in these chairs we've had lots of prognostication <laughs> um, but one thing we keep hearing across the board is how challenging it is to play in this league and you guys do something that hasn't been done since 2013 and knocking off the one seed. How do you prepare night in and night out for the competition in this league? It's incredible. I mean, top to bottom, it has been absolutely a battle. And not only do we have just two more conference games, you know, you got 18 conference games instead of 16. And so you look at that with a not tough non-conference schedule, the ACC is, I think, the toughest conference in the country. I, I would agree with that. I mean, <laughs> completely agree. It's, it's pretty tough. But, um, what is the importance of Ikamu? I, I thought this was one of the best games she's had in terms of controlling the pace, controlling the team, making the right decisions all year. How important is she for you all? She's just a student of the game. Yep. You know, she's athletic. She can do a lot of things, but she's a student. Mm -hmm. And when you look at how different play, different teams are going to play the ball screen action, she can read it. And that's so, so special to have a point guard that can do that. And she's not a natural point guard. Mm -hmm. You know, we've lost our point guard to ACL the last two years. And so now for her to come in and be so big time, um, I, you know, I can't say enough about her. For Nikki, though, Ikamu and Wolfolk, they were with you on that Elite Eight run in 2017. How much do you think that they've drawn on that experience now that they're seniors? Well, you know, it's very rare that people are content to wait their turn. Mm. We had seniors on our team for those two years that they were there, and then they stepped in, and then we were able to hand them the keys. You know, these days, a lot of people want to just jump in and try to get it done. They waited their turn. You look at them now, and they run our team. Yeah. So FSU has never won an ACC title. <laughs> Don't tell how, me well, that. But, uh -oh, but, uh, because you played. Wait, wait. <laughs> but how is that celebration in the locker room, and how do you move forward for tomorrow? You know, it, it was it was nice to see. They were very excited about the opportunity to you know knock down the one seed, but. For us, it's not been just about that. It's been about we've got to have an expectation to get to the championship game because that's what it's all about. It's not about winning a game or two games. It's about winning a championship. This is the most pressing thing at the moment, ACC tournament. But we did have Charlie Cream on earlier, and we talked about you all's opportunity to move into that top 16 conversation and the big dance. How are you feeling about that? Is that something you're even looking at, or are you just focus on ACC right now? Honestly, it's just it's the next game. It's Sorry. ACC tournament, and and really, I don't care with this team. You know, it's like we we can go and do a lot of damage on the road. It'd be awesome to be able to host in, in front of your fans. Um, but again, you know, we just were worried about the next thing, and they've been great about that. Coach, fantastic. You got one word for me. One word to sum up today for you. 
Ooh, that's a hard one. I'm, I'm gonna to say, spot. I'm gonna say, you know, that I'm, I'm ex extremely content. Okay. I, I like know, that. it's just, I love it's, that. yes. Congratulations, Coach. Hey, Coach Sue Simrau of the Florida State Seminoles knocking off the one seed for the first time since 2013. All right, the second semifinal is underway, and it is NC State in comfortable control with a big lead at halftime. Check out the difference from the first quarter and the second quarter for Boston College, um, struggling to find the basket. We're gonna go to Coach Mack. Uh, she's got sound from the locker room as she tries to get her team together. This halftime report is presented by Audi. Welcome back to the ACC Women's Basketball Tournament. It's a part of Champ Week, presented by Principal. Already had one upset today. Florida State's in the final after they knocked off top-seeded Louisville. But right now, NC State in control over BC. Let's take you into the Boston College locker room at halftime. It's going to be a process. And the process, and we've talked about this before, don't let this be a relive of Louisville at Louisville. Okay, the process is right now, we put our foot down, we put our minds into this, we put our heart into this, and we, we take what is ours, and right now we didn't on the boards right there. You guys know you did, all right? Yeah, they did indeed get beat on the boards. Minus eight for Boston College in that first half. Beth Mullins, Debbie Antonelli. The big difference was the second quarter, a 25 to six run for NC State. Well, because NC State knows where their points come from and they play best when they play through their 6'5 center. First team all ACC, Elise Kunain on the inside. Just a sophomore, has the ability to invert to the block with her back to the basket. Has a pick and pop skill set to shoot beyond the arc. Also, in their middle pick and roll, can get in front of the rim and score. On the other side, Emma Guy, five for five before she missed. They're gonna look to feature her in the second half. BC will go on a run, and it's gonna come right here at the start of the third quarter, or NC State will put this game away. It's a wash in the middle, 11 for Guy, 11 for Kunane, both with four rebounds apiece. Aggressive NC State's lineup went to work. Nine for Kayla Jones, 10 for Jada Boyd. And the 13th, 12th and 13th points there for Emma Guy. So NC State has to be careful not to take their foot off the gas. They gotta continue to execute at a high level and try to wear BC down to get to the fourth quarter. Good extra pass, and you use up almost all the shot clock, and you get the right person taking a three. The second best three-point shooter in the history of NC State basketball is Koenig. Two-second triple. Guy going to work inside for two more. Work is the middle name for Emma Guy. I'm telling you, she doesn't take a play off. She uses her body and angles to the ball nicely. But this is where you can get her. Pull her away from the bucket and make her defend on the perimeter. Koenig trying to go back to back. And if that's on Kunain, that's her third. NC State the hall the her soul on the ground. Holding her elbow, First if you're BC, you're hoping it may just be the funny bone. She's trying to work it off. See, in the men's game, they have the hook and hold. That would have been a hook. There would have been a foul. Uh, well, there was a foul on Kinane on that play. Yep. So she departs her third foul. But that, in the, in the women's game, they don't have the hook and hold. In the men's game, they probably could have gone to the monitors and look at that. Yep. Let's see if Boston College can take advantage now with Kinane out. And get a couple of looks at it. State step out of bounds. Taylor Soul is the perfect complement to Emma Guy in this lineup because Guy's drawing extra attention now, and Soul is really challenging to keep off the glass. Air 
Michael Cassell on the floor for Kunoi. Gerard spinning back to the left. Look at her run on the floor. Kayla Jones gonna go coast to coast and miss it. And stay with NC State. I'm telling you, next year, Kayla Jones, I'm gonna have to consider putting her on one of my player of the year to watch lists. I think she's deserving of it next year. She's gonna be a junior, she's a junior right now. She's gonna be a senior. It's a really good skill set. Cassell needs some help. Coney. Baseline there. Jones had a hold of it. And a foul. Was there something extra there? No, I think just pulled her down. She goes hard to the offensive glass, and Kayla Jones didn't like it. Good basket cut, nice bounce pass. Brown Turner with the bucket. She's got seven. lead of the game, the steal. Jakeena Brown Turner with that long wingspan, got a hand on it, got the deflection, Coney gets the steal. Foul uh, off the ball here, will be called on Gerard. That's her third. I think BC's getting a little frustrated because they're fatigued, they're tired, things aren't going their way. Guys, I was talking with Boston College's trainer and I asked her how they were handling the fatigue and the wear and tear of this tournament. She said they brought a massage therapist with them in hopes they would make a long run to help the players stay ready along with ice baths and things of that nature. So, brought a massage therapist on the road with them to this tournament. And it served them well through the first two days, Kelly, and now uh, they may have hit a wall here against NC State. Hopeful that a couple of wins here would be enough to get them into the NCAA tournament. Kayla Jones is a beast on the glass right now. She had two rebounds in the first half. She's got three here in the second already. State shooting 51% and Boston College has dipped below 47. Ninth triple for the Wolfpack today. Sewell. Sewell now with six. Good box out on the shot and Turner keeps it alive. Good ball movement. Nice job of knocking down that three. See, when she gets her elbow under the ball and she follows through, you can only miss the shot four ways. Left, right, long, and short. If your elbow's under the ball, you only can miss it two ways. Long and short. Long and short. Increases your chances by two to Yeah. Bucket <laughs> back to back on the elbow. You know, she's starting to come alive. She didn't do much in the first half. Taylor Soul only played. Well, she played 15 minutes in the first half and only had four field goal attempts. She's got eight points now on the day. Aaron Pass goes to Boston College, and here they come. Oh, and they give it right back. Three on one break for NC State. Cassell from Crutchfield. Back 
Clark have got it up to 20. in my mind. Four conference title games all day Sunday. I don't like losing. Four championship games tomorrow and the American Conference semifinal with UConn. And it all starts on ESPN2 at noon Eastern. ACC followed by the SEC. And then in the evening, the championships for the Big Ten Conference and the Pac-12. It's all a part of ESPN Chat Week, presented by the Principal. Beth Lawrence and Debbie Antonelli will be with you tomorrow, along with Kelly Gramlich, for the call of uh, the ACC Championship game, tipping it off at noon. You know Florida State's going to be there. Who will join them? And who else might we see tomorrow? on that championship Sunday. Where we see Maryland playing for the double in the Big Ten regular season in tournament. How about South Carolina? Looks like they're going to be the overall number one seed in the NCAA tournament. Will they go in with an SEC tournament title? And then uh, Oregon will play Arizona tonight. Stanford plays UCLA. The winners of those games will play tomorrow night in Las Vegas for the Pac-12 crown. Of time running down. Of course, the NCAA Debbie had its final reveal uh, on Monday. It was a pretty good, it was a pretty good list of the top 16 seeds. We did have some questions. Yes, we always do. That will be answered, uh, you know, in the coming days. Should, should Baylor be the overall two or should Oregon be the overall two? That could be huge in terms of where, say, UConn might go as a two seed and where Stanford and UCLA might go as two seeds. It looks like Louisville and Maryland will be paired up as the one and two seeds in the fourth game. And South Carolina stays as the overall number one, and that keeps them away from a semifinal final four with Baylor and Oregon. Yes. What about matchups? Of course, Louisville is one team that beat Oregon in November. Healthy on a neutral site. Cano with the basket there. I think that's part of the reason why Charlie keeps them as a two in Fort Wayne in spite of their upset loss today here to Florida State, who played yes. outstanding. Yes. We also thought that maybe UCLA should have been higher than Stanford since they have the head-to-head. -head. I, exactly. I worry that, you know, in, in every sport, we talk about the full body of work, and that should never take away from head-to-head, -head, which I think is the most important piece of criteria out there. We'll, we'll find out, though, because they're going to play again tonight. And then, you know, what kind of impact can the mid-majors have on the 16 seeds and, and teams that might be hosting? Could it be DePaul or Missouri State or Gonzaga taking some of those host positions? So if you went on a true S curve, you'd see UConn would be with Oregon. Yep, not in Portland, not in Portland. However, geography plays a stronger weight. So let's see who the other number twos are in determining where UConn will go. If there are multiple teams in the same region, uh, you, you're not supposed to be playing one another until the region final, but you certainly can. We, there is precedent 
to see two teams from the same conference in the Elite Eight. You'd rather not, but hey, you know what? If that's true to the S-curve, I don't have a problem with that. I don't either. Should do that. I wish we had an in-conference yes. RPI. I mean, look at the ACC with an 18-conference schedule this year. Florida oh, State 18 games, that's right. Yeah. Florida State had the hardest schedule in the league because they played all the top teams on the road. third quarter. It was a 25-6 outburst in the second quarter that opened up a close game here for NC State. There's a fourth foul on Marnell Girard. She'll check out. Yeah, that's right, Westmore. Your guns have been blazing today. Everybody getting in on the act. A well-balanced attack for NC State. NC State's uh, really worked on their depth as the season has worn on. Players like Erica Cassell and Grace Hunter and Kaylee, Kayla Ely, they have all were hurt last year with their ACL injuries, and they all were starters at the time. They all came back, and now they come off the bench, and they have really added value to what NC State does. Their role is very important. Tony? That's that one to drop. She's got 13. Nice off the bounce. Good time and score awareness, clock awareness. And Boyd and Soul really battling inside. See, Jacob Boyd is a player that can match Taylor Soul's energy and athleticism. And she's doing that on the glass. Look at Koenig right here. Creates a little separation off the bounce. Gets a nice bounce off the rim. I remember when Wes got Ace Koenig to commit to NC State, it was between Stanford and NC State. That was a huge recruit and a huge get, which really helped him get over the, the corner, I thought, turn the corner on recruiting yeah. some other bigger names. And Debbie, I have confirmation that Koenig's family, her dad, mom, and sister, are in town from the West Coast and from Canada as well, here to watch and see if Ace Koenig can win an ACC title in her final season. Right, from British Columbia. Dickens hits the three. Well, it's been since 1991. Yep. As you mentioned before, there's only been four in NC State's storied history. Got one in 1980. Yes, yeah, I did. just thought I would you throw know, that I was out just there. Saying, not only do you have a champion, but you, you also had a similar decision, right? That ace, either uh, NC State or Stanford, was that? No, uh, no. Something was, that you had to mull over. No, I had to talk to between NC State and North Carolina. Oh, oh, Wolfpack. The last couple of quarters. As Boston College gamely fights on. With NC State getting closer, 10 minutes away from a berth in the final. They beat Florida State, by the way, during the regular season, handily at home. Uh, but that was a long, long time ago, mid-January. Twenty-point lead to the fourth quarter for the Wolfpack as the two seed inches closer to a berth in the final. Sixty-five, forty-five. as we head to the fourth quarter. Uh, Wendy's Wooden Watch today focuses on Elisa Kunane leading the ACC with 14 double-doubles today in limited minutes, 11 points and four rebounds. And if NC State can maintain the lead, Debbie, uh, she may get a good rest here in the fourth quarter. She could use a little bit of rest, and I know her dad, Dan, is proud. I mentioned Dan in the first half. He's a great girl dad. Really proud of his daughter. Big smile. She plays the game with great heart and energy, great enthusiasm. She has a wonderful spirit about her. She's a terrific teammate. The teammates love her. She's always got that big smile going. There it is. Summerfield, North Carolina. At 6'5", the sophomore having a big impact on and off the court. B 
BC is going to pick up with some full court pressure. I think it's really hard to press NC State. Yeah, a lot of ball handlers. Yeah, and when you open up the court with their three point shooting ability, it could be dangerous on the backside of pressure. State. We want to close this out, but you also want to stay healthy here in the final 10 minutes. Jakia Brown Turner landed funny, awkwardly. We're talking about BC, number 14. On a teammate's ankle. Entering the state, number 23, Grace Hunter. Hunter comes back on for Brown Turner. You want to win a championship while you're here, but also the teams that are the top seeds and hunting for an NCAA tournament berth want to make sure they get out of here healthy as well. That's why we'll be interested to see uh, how Kaya Gillespie is doing for Florida State after she took that hard fall late in the fourth quarter for Florida State. <laughs> we are trying to keep it going. Been a long three days. Of course, for NC State. State has done a terrific job on the glass. Way to run the floor for Jada Boyd. Yeah, they have really got into the legs in the second quarter of BC. As Dickens knocks down a triple. She's a terrific three-point shooter, but that's her first. Or, excuse me, make that her second. Dangerous pass there. The uh, held ball at midfield. Hell the ball. ACC Coach of the Year, Joanna Burnaby McNamee, grew up in Weirton, Pennsylvania, or West Virginia. Her dad worked for the Weirton Steel Company for 40 years. Her mom was a seamstress. Her first hoop was across the street because they lived in a small house with a small driveway and they couldn't put a hoop in their own driveway. So the older couple across the street said, We'll put a hoop in the driveway for you kids. They built it at the Weirton Steel Company. The pole, the backboard, the rim, all of it. And that's where she learned how to play. In the driveway across the street at her neighbor's house in Weirton, West Virginia. And they uh, have, she has helped engineer a memorable season. Fourth place, best ever for them. 11 wins in the ACC. That's the most they've ever had since they joined the league. And a 20-win season this year, the best in a decade. They've been able to win on the road in the ACC. It's uh, been a terrific year for Boston College, especially the second half. Don't forget, coming up tonight, 6 Eastern, New Carolina from Cameron Indoor on ESPN. Duke took the first leg on the road, and now back home to face Carolina for the second time. You know, both these coaches, Wes Moore and Joanna Beckerman, made their mistakes early in their career on a lesser stage, right? I mean, Joanna was at West Virginia Wesleyan as a head coach. That was her first year. She spent three years at Pikeville College, a couple of years at Albany right before she got to Boston College. And Wes Moore had a, a similar route, Maryville College, Francis Marion, UTC. 
And now you're on the big stage. State, their fans start to enjoy some big moments here this afternoon. Look at this ball movement. Camille Hobby, a freshman, to another freshman, Boyd, who just turns the corner on that cut. Great spacing, good ball movement. And if Camille Hobby's footwork isn't good enough on that reverse pivot, you don't see that cut yet. That's why it's important for bigs to be able to have that reverse pivot in the low post and in the high post. NC State and Westmore, they finished second in the league. The two seed, the best at NC State in 30 years. And of course, the legendary coach, Kay Yao, all the success that she had. You know, back in the early years of the ACC, you, you think about NC State in Maryland under Chris Weller, and then Debbie Ryan got things going at Virginia, and, and they became a power. And then Sylvia Hatchell starts cranking it up at North Carolina, and, and things change. And then late 1990s, early 2000s, Gail Gestenkors changes everything. Duke wins five in a row. And of late, dominated by the new guys, Notre Dame and Louisville. And now it looks like it's shaping up to go back to NC State and Florida State, with the Knowles looking for their first championship in history, and NC State looking for their first since 1991. Right now, Charlie Green has them slated as a three seed, joining South Carolina, UCLA, and Oregon State in Greenville as the top four seeds in that region. Well, this but it's not out of the realm of possibility right. they can move up to a, a two a two if they finish strong. They could use a little help with U UCLA, Stanford, or UConn faltering. Based on math, if that's the uh, true mathematical S, then they're the number one three because they would be in yes. South Carolina's yeah. region, right? Yep. But we know geography plays a role, so we don't know that's to, to be a true fact or not. Well, that would certainly be the closest to home for NC State. So if they are the top three, then that's where they would supposed to be slotted. You know there's one way to solve all this. A true S-curve without the geography. Just send everybody yeah. all together. And how would you accomplish that? You could pick one, one spot to do it. You could pick one spot to do it. Yes. One sweet 16, baby. That's all we need. Kelly? Update on Kai Gillespie's injury. Sue Simrad was on with Monica McNutt and Elena Beard during the break, and she said it's a back injury for Kai Gillespie. She's not sure if she's going to play tomorrow, but she's not out, so we know that. And then Boston College looking ahead. If they were to lose this game, they want to root for Florida State because they have the win over Florida State. Charlie Cream has told us as long as Florida State continues to do well, that will help BC in their tournament chances. It's always fun this time of year to see what fan bases have to root for others and a three-point opportunity here for Boyd. And so Sometimes you got to root for your rival. Yeah, that's tough to do, isn't it? But isn't Florida State's two wins over Louisville enough for Boston College to have a win over Florida State? That, that should be a very good pull. Because you know, Georgia they, Tech has a sweep over Florida State also, so maybe Georgia Tech needs to be rooting for Florida State. Florida State right now is a six, but I, I think they're a lot closer to a four right now. And remember, Gonzaga had a late season loss. Northwestern and Iowa, other teams up for a top 16, both lost early in the Big Ten tournament. Well, Oregon State, who the committee had as a four seed, they lost early in their tournament. And then what about our mid-majors, Missouri State? Gonzaga and Princeton, all with very high RPIs. How do they fit on the host yes. bubble? That, they, they are going to be interesting to see how the committee looks at things, because we know in the past RPI has been significant. And sometimes it's pretty darn near close to 1 through 16 RPI, or the top 16 seeds. Uh, but if you take a deep dive, and, and we have been great champions for the mid-majors, when you've got the resume, the strength of schedule, and a marquee win, 
heck yeah, you deserve a chance to host. Those are lacking in the mid-majors this year. When you take a deep dive, Missouri State, Gonzaga, and Princeton with those high RPIs, they don't have a win over a top 20 Power 5 opponent. They only have played Power 5 teams nine times combined amongst those three. But they have some pretty good eye test losses. So that, that's going to be a great discussion for the committee. Look at UConn. What's their quality win? We know what their three losses are. DePaul is their best RPI win. That's it. They have yeah. one. Yep. Right? One. Undefeated against everybody but the power three. So I, I can't fault them too much for taking on the best. I know, they, 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 didn't, they didn't look good in those three losses. Well, they know they have to play yes. those non-conference yes. games because of the league they're in. Now, next year, they're going in the Big East. Things could change. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe not. A lot, I think, will revolve around the Pac-12 because... They have the quality at the top, and they have the number one conference RPI. So as we know, you can work the system. If you play a lower Pac-12 team or two, you get the benefit of all their opponents, right. which can really jack your RPI up. So that's how it helps BC, yes. because Louisville beat Oregon. Florida State beat Louisville twice. Boston College has a win over Florida State. That's how you play the uh, semantics, the S-curve, the eye test, the yeah. analytics. I think, um, I believe it would be Louisville and South Carolina who have the best wins when you look at who they beat. I think South Carolina has really established themselves as the overall one. And they, they should get stronger playing in the SEC tournament in terms of their numbers as well. But, you know, Baylor has just the one loss uh, they, they don't they don't benefit from playing in the Big 12 this year, but that loss was with, without Lauren Cox, so they've beaten everyone else they've had to face. The defending champs have. Good times. We're talking about the tournament. Back to the ACC in a moment. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Principal Financial Group. Investments, retirement, insurance. Oh, champ week well underway, and we're getting closer to a championship matchup tomorrow in the ACC. Florida State's in. They upset Louisville earlier today and awaiting what appears to be a matchup with NC State. Kaya Gillespie's health a big issue, Debbie. Boy, it will certainly be a factor because she's a big-time threat to score. And Sue Semran has a package for her on the block. She has a package for her outside the three-point line, but there's no package for her toughness and her effort on the offensive glass. That's just all Gillespie. She had a double-double. Her senior mates also scored in double digits. And they top Louisville for the second time. The NC State can get to their depth and not lose much. It's a veteran, experienced group that comes off the bench. Usually you bring younger players off your bench. Wes Moore brings seniors. And seniors that come in with a sense of urgency that want to play. 28 points off that bench. They established Kunane in the lane early. They have knocked down 10 threes to balance that. And a total team effort for NC State. Boyd and Koenig with 16 apiece. kunane has been resting this entire fourth quarter. And now the wait will begin for Boston College. Have they done enough to get in? A terrific late season surge. An upset of Duke yesterday. They also have a win over Florida State on the resume. And they will be rooting like crazy for the Knowles tomorrow. Good pass, good sell. Fill in the lane. Tell you what, what a run through this tournament for BC, though. That game last night was outstanding between them and Duke. They went on a 14-0 run to finish the game and win it. They were down by seven with four minutes to play. Duke never scored another point. BC rattled off 14 in a row. Back for the finish in Greensboro in a moment. Oh, 
Well, Boston College still showing some spirit. They're gonna knock down a couple buckets here late. Well, I bet they've got a terrific sophomore class. They sure do. And something to build around through recruiting for Joanna Burnaby McNamee in just her second year to come in this league and win ACC Coach of the Year. Ball. Lose a couple of starters. They're keeping the press on. And they'll get the turnover. Uh-oh, looking for three. And a foul off the ball. They're gonna count the basket as well. Yes, count the two and then a foul off the ball and look out. Uh-oh, that's free throws. Here comes Boston College. Is there time? Watch off the ball right here. They get tangled up with Taylor Soul and Grace Hunter both get wrapped up. The foul is gonna be on Grace Hunter. Taylor Soul's going to the free throw line. Boston College now on a 16 to 8 run. Well, the press and a chance at a four point play. The press is bothered at NC State. And all of a sudden, they're sneaking right back into this thing. Been down by as many as 22. Taylor Soul is a terrific free throw shooter. taken nine points off of the deficit, Kelly. That's right, in Boston College's huddle, Coach Mack was emphasizing what they're gonna do in this press, trapping, trying to force turnovers. The way Coach Mack was conducting that huddle, she did not believe this game was over. Well, neither does her team right now. Another turnover by NC State. It's a 13-point game. Look at the life in BC. NC State better match their energy to finish this off. State touched it. Guy lost the handle. That was an opportunity missed for Boston College. You move the ball, you have numbers. You move it faster when you pass it than when you dribble it. You just had a three on two opportunity. even into your offense till there's 10 seconds on the shot clock. Hunter with Guy on her. They clear it out at Hunter and Emma Guy does a great job defensively. And Ely with the steal. And then the foul on Gerard. And that is her fifth. Got Sports Center tonight after the Washington Arizona basketball game with John Anderson and Kenny Maine. Trey Young and John Morant tangling up. Duke and Carolina will have all the coverage from Cameron and also post fight coverage from UFC in Vegas tonight. All a part of the late night Sports Center. You mean there's some sports going on in Vegas? <laughs> there it is. Always. That's a good they'll stuff happening. They'll have the Raiders next year. NFL's coming to town. NFL Draft will be out there. As a matter of fact, we'll have coverage on the ESPN networks. Back up to 15. Well, if, if Charlie told Kelly, Charlie Cream told Kelly that a, a good showing by BC could be a chance for them to be in. Yeah. This, they're in. They've played really well here in, uh, under circumstances where they're down double digits. They've pressed, they're fatigued, and they're healthy and rolling. We saw that last night. We saw how good they can be. That win over Duke factored. It's got to factor in. Yeah, they, they won the last four minutes of that game last night. Can they win the last four minutes here? It'd be a uh, 
Herculean comeback if they can get it. Debbie, I'm with you on this. I think Boston College deserves to be in. Really, I think we're punishing them for a few of those early losses, but to show how far this team has come from how they were playing in the Holy Cross loss and things like that to how they're playing now, they sure look like a tournament team right now. Well, and it's not just measured up against the rest of the ACC. It's measured up against the entire field. The best thing that could happen for BC is none of the mid-majors to have any upsets. You know, like in the Summit League, if South yeah. Dakota loses, that's a problem. Champions USA should be a fabulous tournament as well. And a charge called on NC State. Boston College will get it back, 146 to go. What great fight in Joanna Burnaby, McNamee's team. But would you imagine anybody from Weirton, West Virginia would have anything less than that? When they're, when they're making your hoop at the steel mill. Oh, I, I got to believe it's still standing, right, Debbie? Is that how the story goes? I'm sure. How for could the you next, for the next could, crop of kids. How could you knock it down? <laughs> I mean, it's steel tough. You want to get good looks, but you, you got to work that clock as well and get it quick. And NC State's going to come out with it. Koenig to Ely. And now it's a game of keep away. I mean, the sophomore class is outstanding. Emma Guy will graduate, and Georgia Pineau will graduate. Taylor Ortlip will graduate. Those three seniors play a significant role, but they've got a postseason life. And for NC State, they are headed to the final. A nice hand for East Koenig. And boy, would an ACC championship look good on their resume after they stumbled uh, down the stretch. Here is what their resume looks like at 26 and 4 with a solid RPI. They have big wins over Maryland and Florida State, projected as a three seed. Well, that, that six and two record, actually, not against quad one. That, that would be on the men's side. That, that would be top 50 wins on the women's side. You don't have the quad one, two, three, and four. That's the net. That's what we'd like to get in the women's game. I think the RPI is a bit outdated. Timeouts, NC State, 30 second timeouts. And a 30 second timeout under a minute to go. But uh, the, the big thing tomorrow for uh, NC State. If they can get the win over Florida State, will that be enough to move them up a seed line, possibly? And of course, for Florida State, seeking their first ever ACC tournament title. Have they done enough uh, to, they're certainly in the discussion now for a top 16 seed and host for the first and second round. They got a fresh 30 on the clock to work with. Boston College with a good late push to make things a little interesting through the final minutes. But now time certainly on the side of the Wolf Pack and the folks are getting tangled up here. And Shot at it. The push for Portland. 
circle back for three and hit it. Ten point game. NC State needs to call timeout to advance the ball. Wow. Afraid to deal with the full court pressure right now. You know, it, it, it shouldn't be a problem for NC State, but it has been this season when teams press them. Look at the advanced pass up the floor. Taylor Olip says, I don't need two, I'll take a three. That's a senior thinking the game. Gets this thing to 10. Down by as many as 22 to cut it to 10 with 35.8 to play. NC State playing this fourth quarter uh, without Alyssa Kudane. She's been resting throughout. Wes Moore has turned to his bench. They're picking up some quality minutes. They're trying to hold it together here through the last 35.8 seconds. seconds to burn here. Let's just take it, just dribble it out. I'm sure they'll probably take a shot though, because there is a differential on the shot clock. Missed the layup. Dickens with the push. Look for three more. Good. Timeout again, West Morris. Seven point game with 9.2 to go. senior runs the floor hard runs it wide Beth how many times you hear me say that look at that wide open well so now Debbie do you, do you foul here to put NC State on yes yep so they try and make a miss and then you chuck threes the other end yeah you foul yeah you've extended the game and you've cut it to this yep So the Wolfpack at the line today, 12 for 15. So NC State couldn't advance the ball because they already inbounded it before Westmore got the timeout. That's my timeout. That's why they're getting the ball on the sideline. I guess they're not going to foul. So NC State will run it out, and North Carolina State advances to the ACC championship game and a date tomorrow with Florida State. It was a big second quarter for NC State to open things up. 25 to six, they outscored. BC and they are into the championship game for the first time in a decade. They will try and win their first title in about 30 years. Coming up next on ESPNU, Arkansas and South Carolina as we head to the SEC tournament for the top-seeded Gamecocks. But first, let's check in with Kelly. Lisa Kunane, big win for NC State. How does it feel to be advancing to the ACC tournament championship game? Uh, it feels amazing. This team, what we've done in this tournament, we came out with a lot of fire tonight, and we're just really excited for tomorrow. You got some rest today. How did it feel to watch your teammates really get it done in that second half? It's amazing the depth that we have on this team right now. Um, it was great that I could out the whole fourth quarter and yet we still got the job done. Maybe you'll break a sweat tomorrow. Huh? Maybe you'll break a sweat tomorrow. I know, maybe. <laughs> All right, thanks, Lisa. Thank Appreciate so it. Thank you very much, Kelly. Kunane should be well rested for that showdown tomorrow. They beat Florida State in the regular season and they will square off for the championship in the automatic bid. Tomorrow at noon Eastern, we'll have the call for you. 82 to 75 for Kelly Gramlich and Debbie Antonelli. I'm Beth Mowens. College basketball scoreboard presented by Under Armour is up next, followed by the SEC Women's Tournament, Carolina and Arkansas.
set in Greensboro for the ACC championship game Sunday at noon Eastern. It's the two seed NC State and the four seed Florida State. It's the uh, Seminoles trying for their first ever ACC title, NC State, their first since 1991. Beth Mullins, Debbie Antonelli, we had a little bit of everything here on our semifinal Saturday, and it's Florida State, the big upset. They get Louisville for the second time this year. Yeah, big win for Florida State here to advance to the championship game, and when you get to this time of year, you have to have great guard play. That's exactly what Florida State had in their upset over the Cardinals. Nausea Wolfolk and Nikki Akamu combined for 30 points to come with a point guard. Wolfolk right here on the drive. Both are aggressive downhill drivers to the lane. And Kaya Gillespie, who took a late fall, might be available tomorrow. We're not sure. Here's the last play. Dana Evans misses. Jasmine Jones misses the tap. And Florida State secures the victory. And Kaya Gillespie, of course, her health will be uh... Much talked about overnight and into the morning. They're going to need a, a presence in the middle because they'll have to deal with Alyssa Kunane and this North Carolina State attack. Yeah, big smile, big personality, big game on the low block. That's Alyssa Kunane at 6'5", the sophomore, a first-team All-ACC performer, played only 16 minutes in the game against Boston College. NC State in command from the beginning, but Kunane can give you buckets on the block. She can also stretch to the three-point lane. She's a terrific pick and pop. She also can defend her position inside. And Ace Koenig, the senior, did a nice job of finding jump shots. Four for 10 outside the arc today for 16 points to lead NC State. All right, so we've got NC State, Florida State in the final. The Wolfpack won the regular season matchup for both teams, Debbie. It'll be their third game in three days with a championship on the line. What are you looking forward to? Well, I'm looking forward to the interior play. If Kaya Gillespie can't come and play tomorrow, this is going to be a big, big story and big opportunity for NC State. They already play through and to the post. It sets up their perimeter game. And for Florida State, this is a hungry team that is starting to play some of their best basketball right now in the postseason. They've played well here, but their big three are, could be th good enough for Florida State to pull the win. Noon Eastern on ESPN2, the ACC final will start our championship Sunday from the Greensboro Coliseum.